Alright, so we're going to unmold these now. I made a green one yesterday as well. There's the pink and the yellow. Um, I'm going to show you guys how to take the wick pins out. It can be a little bit, it's not as sliding out as easy as I said it was yesterday. Um, you kind of have to, because it molds right around the wick pin, that's why you spray it, to so slide it out as easily as possible, but it still can be a little bit of a challenge. So I give it a couple little taps to start it. And then just go real slow. If you squeeze too hard and pull too fast, you'll create drag marks on the outside of your candle and fingerprints. And you really don't want to do that. Wait till it gets all the way to the bottom, and then you kind of have to just turn and pull, turn and pull. out. See how easy it would be just to take the um, couple paper towels and buff the wax right off. Alright, so here are my eco wicks. These are already pre-tabbed and pre-waxed, so they're nice and stiff so that they can go right through the hole. Any other kind of um, wick that you might use if it's not pre-waxed already, you might want to consider waxing it yourself and letting it harden. Or if you want to use like a braided wick that um, that you don't want to wax, you want to leave it nice and flexible. To push it through, you might need like a bamboo skewer to help get it all the way through and then pull it through the top. Tabbing it and, and yourself and all that, it can be a little bit of a pain because sometimes you can't squeeze the tab on the end of the wick nicely and then the wick will pull all the way through and it just can be a real, real hassle. So there you go. That's pretty easy. I'll do the other couple of ones here. Have a little bit of trouble sometimes. Huh? What, Bobby? I'll try that one in a little bit here. Let's see if this one. These are my kids going crazy. Sunday morning and they just had pancakes. Alright, that one came out pretty easy. So, the reason why the bottom of the mold is actually the top of the candle is because it's a little bit concave like that so that when you initially light your candle, um, the melt pool will stay in the center instead of running off the sides. However, when you um, have a candle in the mold and it's drying, etc., etc., it naturally creates a little concave thing here as well. So you could really do either side as the top of the candle and still have a safe melting pool. But um, sometimes I will actually, when I when I pour an entire candle at once, I actually heat the mold with a heat gun because a hot mold pouring hot wax into it will actually create a better finish on the outside of your candle, um, but I obviously can't do that with doing layers. Hey! I obviously can't do that when doing layers because, uh, because it'll just heat the and melt the previous layer before I can have a chance to put that next layer on. So when you do that, when you heat it like that, it tends to create a more even uh, top to the bottom of your candle. but. Um, sometimes I'll go back and reheat the bottom while it's still in the mold to create a nice even bottom. But if not, putting the tab in there, it creates a nice little spot to put your tab in. You still put your little sticker over it. And it works just fine. Alright, so that's taking the wick pin out of your candle and wicking it with a pre-tabbed wick. and. You got candles ready to go. You usually wait a few days before you actually can burn them. Gives them extra time to cure. Hardening to take out of the mold is just the first step. You need to let it set for a couple of days before it's real safe to uh, to light. And that's it.